Welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. My name is David Gafford, and today we're going to do a review of the Pit Boss Austin XL Pellet Grill. We have had the Austin XL pellet grill for about nine months and it's time for a review of the grill's performance to date. For those of you new to the Pit Boss Austin XL, it is a pellet grill that is sold at Walmart for right around $500. The grill is a competitor to other grills like the new Traeger Pro 780, the GMG Jim Bowie, and the Rectech Bull, among other grills. The Rectech Bull is the most expensive in the group at more than double the price of the Pit Boss, followed by the Traeger and then the GMG. The Austin XL can be found at your local Walmart for right around $500, and you can check out our website for a comparison chart of the prices and features of these four grills. So, why did I purchase the Austin XL? I had read on barbecue forums for a few years that the Austin XL was the value leader in pellet grills. It was the best first pellet grill for someone to learn on, and I had never cooked on a pellet grill before, and I wanted to learn so that the pit boss, it just seemed a logical choice. I ran to Walmart and I found the grill in stock and the grill is pretty heavy and it's not something that you're going to be able to load yourself. I had a blue vest from Walmart come and help me from the lawn and garden area and they even helped me into the parking lot to get the grill into the SUV. Now we had a few assembly problems when it came time to putting this together. The unit that I purchased was well packed inside the box and didn't show any signs of shipping damage. The outside of the box was rough, but everything inside was absolutely pristine. To put the grill together, you start by assembling the legs and the bottom cart, which should be a piece of cake. Unfortunately for me, the screw hardware that came with my Austin XL was actually brittle and two of the screws that go into the legs snapped off halfway during tightening. I used a manual screwdriver instead of a power drill and it was just this force of manual screwdriver that broke those off. So it was really unfortunate, but I wasn't able to retrieve those screws from the legs. And since the head had separated from the screw, I was stuck. It was time to call Pit Boss parent company Danson's for customer support. I emailed customer support since it was after hours for their live support team and I went to bed. In the morning I hadn't heard anything back yet and when customer support hours opened I found a human on the phone. The CSR asked me if I'd be willing to try to get the screws out with a special cutting bit that I could buy and told me that even if I couldn't get them out they would ship me the parts that I needed. I tried the fix and it just didn't work and they shipped my new legs and new hardware packet out the next day. Once the legs arrived with the new hardware, the rest of the assembly was a breeze. The Austin XL is primarily pre-assembled other than the cart. So once it was time to put together, uh, it was really just time to light it up and get the initial burn in. I followed the directions that had been previously set by others of spraying down the entire interior with Pam cooking spray and setting it to around 300 degrees for a couple of hours. What I looked for and didn't find were specific instructions from Pit Boss on how to handle the initial burn-in. I was surprised to see so little information on such a crucial step in all of the provided materials. Now, setting up the Austin XL is as simple as plugging in the power cord which is provided and setting the desired temperature and pressing the on button. As soon as I hit the power button, the fan absolutely roared to life and I started to hear pellets dropping into the hopper to prepare to start the grill. In order for the pellet grill to start, it just takes a few minutes for enough pellets to be dropped into the fire cup that it can be ignited by the hot rod that presides in the bottom of that cup. As the initial pellets began to combust, the smoke starts coming out of the smokestack and gets very heavy just before all the pellets in the cup catch and the smoke will dramatically clear up. It didn't take more than eight to 10 minutes for the grill to come up to 300 degrees. And I found that the thermometers, while accurate, didn't agree with each other. 
The one in the hood actually is located in the middle of the top of the hood and the second thermometer is located in the pellet system itself and the temperature is displayed on the LCD readout of the front of the pellet reservoir. In my experience, these two thermometers don't agree on much and it wasn't uncommon for the two gauges to read 75 to 100 degrees differently in temperature. I didn't love that I couldn't rely on the lid thermometer, but if you've ever had a smoker before, you're probably fully aware that the lid thermometers can be very hit or miss. I found the digital thermometer that regulates the temperature of the grill to be much more accurate over time, and around 350 degrees, the two thermometers would actually agree with each other, but for some reason, only at about 350 degrees. Now, a pellet grill versus an offset smoker. The way that a pellet grill and an offset smoker work are dramatically different from each other. Here at the Barbecue Lab, we have smokers of all types, and a pellet grill versus an offset smoker is a difficult comparison. With an offset smoker, splits of wood are the fuel source. With any pellet grill, tiny pellets of wood about the size of a pill are used for the fuel. On an offset, you'll be adding a new split to the firebox about every 45 minutes for the duration of the cook, but with a pellet grill, you can load up to about 40 pounds of pellets into the hopper, and then that's it. It's hard to ignore the convenience of a pellet grill when it comes to a long smoking session. Overnight cooks on a pellet grill are as easy as setting the grill to your desired temperature, loading on the meat, and going to bed. Overnight cooks on an offset smoker it means getting up at least once an hour to add new splits of wood. Convenience is really a huge factor in deciding on a pellet grill over a traditional offset. Now, there are a lot of questions and discussion about pellet grills and their ability to put a decent smoke ring on a piece of meat. Some say it's no different from cooking on an offset, while others swear up and down that you can't get any kind of a smoke ring when using a pellet grill. And the truth lies somewhere in between the two extremes. It's certainly possible to get a smoke ring while using a pellet grill, and that smoke ring will almost definitely not be the same depth as what you could get using a traditional offset cooker. It's been said many times before that people eat with their eyes before they ever put a bite in their mouth. But on this front, I've been pleasantly surprised by the ability of the pit boss to put a smoke ring on everything from briskets to pork butts. And the level of smoke flavor, there, there are many ways to get the flavor of smoke into the meat that you're cooking. You can cook with only wood and burn a super clean fire and give flavor that way. You can also choke down your fire and get your wood to smolder and coat your meat in bitter smoke coating that turns your meat a dirty brown. No one likes dirty smoke. That flavor just brings to the party something that you don't want. And that's one of the areas where the Austin XL absolutely shines. The Austin XL is almost completely incapable of bringing dirty smoke to your meat party. The wood pellets that you decide to burn are completely up to you, but running a clean fire is what the pit boss really does best. Other than the first eight to 10 minutes when the pellets are trying to ignite and get the grill up to temperature, you won't see much smoke coming out of this grill. And if you're new to smoking, that's actually a really good thing. More smoke doesn't necessarily mean good flavor. You want clear and almost blue smoke to come out of your smoker, and that's exactly what you get from the Austin XL. It's never been this easy to run a clean fire and be inside the entire time doing it. Now, we've had a few personal missteps. Just like every other backyard barbecue cook, we've had our missteps here at the Barbecue Lab. And here are some of our more memorable fails with the Austin XL. We decided to try an overnight brisket cook on the pit boss and we loaded an entire packer brisket into the cooker and set it to 250 overnight. I woke up the next morning to a grill that was 34 degrees and had apparently gone out only about an hour into the overnight cook. Well, the pit boss Austin XL doesn't clean itself and failure to clean it regularly makes it so that the pellets won't ignite properly due to excess pellet waste covering the pellet igniter. When I opened the grill lid, I found my brisket at a balmy 36 degrees sitting on a giant pile of unlit pellets. The grill had kept loading pellets into the hopper all night, even though the grill wasn't lit. This meant that I had about 30 pounds of pellets to clean up and sift out all of the ash that was now mixed in through it all. We threw the brisket in the oven and finished it off in time for guests since we were cooking in December and the outside temp was just like a refrigerator. Lesson learned. Always clean out your pellet grill before any long cook, and at least between every three and four cooks to be safe. 
Another one was over Thanksgiving, we took on the smoking of two 12 pound turkeys for the family get together. We wanted to cook these birds in aluminum foil pans to keep the drippings for gravy. We took the top shelf out, which made room for two whole birds in full foil pans. We brined and rubbed the birds in preparation and loaded them into the pit boss early Thanksgiving morning. We were cooking in the Midwest of the United States on November 25th, and we experienced wind gusts of 40 plus miles per hour most of Thanksgiving day. These are the kinds of cooking conditions that really put a pellet grill from a big box store to the test. Grills like the Austin XL and a few of their competitors are made with a very thin metal body to keep prices down and meet customer demand. The downside to using thin gauge metal is that wind and rain can really mess with the temperature of the grill. We were trying to cook around 275 degrees for our Thanksgiving turkeys and the grill was struggling to find a consistent temperature with the crazy gusting winds. We pulled our truck out to block the wind, but it still didn't help much. We moved everything we could find that wouldn't blow away and surrounded the grill to create a barrier, but the wind was nasty and it just wouldn't give up. We pulled the turkeys earlier than we would have liked to to still make Thanksgiving lunch start, but and while they were done and had a great flavor, the meat was difficult to pull off the bone. If you're gonna consider an Austin XL and you live in a region where snow, rain, and high winds are going to come to your barbecue cook, be forewarned, that a welding blanket or some other environment preparation will be key to great cooks and adverse conditions. Now, one of the main differences that you'll see between the Austin XL and the competition is the way they handle setting the temperature. The Pit Boss uses a simple metal dial to set your grilling or smoking temperature. Other brands like the Rectech and certain models of Traeger grills use a digital readout that can be set in five degree increments. This is where my major beef comes into play with the Austin XL grill. The grill can do 225, 250, 300 degrees through settings on the primary dial. My question is, where's 275? Most of the recipes that you'll find online from pitmasters like Malcolm Reed and Cosmos Q recommend 275 as the temperature for the duration of the cook. Just about the only problem that I have with this grill is that there are too few temperature settings to control the unit. The grill is missing 275 and a few other temperatures, and that gave me problems when I was trying to cook someone else's recipe. Now, if you are good with doing the math in your head and figuring out how much additional time cooking at, two, at 250 will add or how much less time cooking at 300 will mean, maybe it's no big deal. But for us though, there were times, more times than not, that we wanted to set the Austin XL at a temperature it couldn't do because of the limited options on the dial. Now, we move this grill around a lot. There are some great wheels on the back of the grill and they are very, very much like roller blade wheels, but oversized. Now the front wheels, they're small casters that are lockable and I'm grateful for that. Without the ability to lock the casters on this, it would have been down at the end of the driveway and into the road more times than I could probably count. Now the wheels on the Pit Boss aren't made for off-road, so if you're planning on pulling the grill from the, back, from the garage around to the backyard through the grass, you're gonna have a rough go. If you're planning on keeping the, the Austin XL on the patio or the driveway or the deck, it's absolutely made for that. I hope you've enjoyed our review of the Pit Boss Austin XL Pellet Grill. We've enjoyed using it here at the Barbecue Lab, and it can be a great first pellet grill if you're looking to add one to your arsenal. We have a few cooking videos of our YouTube channel coming very soon on the Austin XL if you'd like to see what kind of food it puts out and how it operates. Now, if you like this video, I want you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We post new videos here every week at the Barbecue Lab where we test the gear of the barbecue world and make sure you're buying the right gear the first time. Now, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at The Barbecue Lab, and also find us at www.thebarbecuelab.com. Now, make sure if you like this, make sure you like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you real soon back here on The Barbecue Lab.